So the gimlet is one of the pillars of the cocktail ferment, and for one reason or another, I haven't done it on the show yet. Well, that ends today. I'm calling this episode Gin Gimlet and All of It, because I like how it rhymes. <laughs> So I'm going to make this drink a few ways here, and we're going to pay particular attention to the lime cordial, kind of a vital ingredient in the gimlet. But first, let's cover some history about this old gal. It's the golden age of sail, or at least the dawn of it, the 17th century, and scurvy is rampant amongst sailors, particularly British sailors. Scurvy, if you don't know, is a condition caused by a prolonged deficiency of vitamin C, and scurvy sucks, by the way. Anemia. Bone pain, edema, you break out in little bleeding sores all over, your teeth fall out, you can't catch your breath, you become depressed, incredibly, like, paralyzed, lethargic, just like, uh, can't move, lethargy. It's basically like living in one of your anxiety dreams, but all the time, and eventually it will kill you. Anyway, like I said, it's caused by a lack of vitamin C, and if you didn't know before, now you know. But if you were a sailor in the 1600s, you didn't know, because it's not until 1747 that a doctor from Scotland by the name of James Lind put two and two together and suggested that citrus juices be administered aboard ships to prevent and cure scurvy. British sailors began drinking so much lime juice that they got the nickname Limeys, and it stuck. Without refrigeration, they had to get pretty inventive on how to preserve their limes at sea, and less frequently, some lemons. So some of the methods actually destroyed the vitamin C uh, that rendered them useless. They would boil them. The best solution, it turned out, was to mix the juice into liquor, usually rum, and produce grog. But this episode isn't about grog, it's about the gimlet. In 1867, another Scottish fellow by the name of Lachlan Rose figured out that you could preserve limes with sugar instead of alcohol, and he bottled it and named it after himself, Rose's Lime Cordial, also known as Rose's Lime Juice. I've come down pretty hard on roses over the years, but it does have real pedigree. It's just that these days, well, uh, let's, uh, let's just read the ingredients here. Water, high fructose corn syrup, lime juice concentrate, sodium metabisulfite, bi bi sodium metabisulfite, preservative, natural flavors, yellow number five, and blue number one contains sulfite. Yeah. So not a whole lot of what probably should be in there. Now, while the men afore the mast, uh, that's the non-officers for you landlubbers, would be served rum, the genteel officers of the British Navy often preferred gin, and when mixed with roses, lime, cordial, it became a gimlet. Uh, oh, but why a gimlet? Well, there's two pretty reasonable sounding stories about that one. There is a tool called a gimlet that looks a little like an awl or a pick, and one of its uses aboard a ship would be to bore a hole in that fresh barrel of booze you need to open up for dinner. The drink could very likely be named after that tool that uh, loosed the gin from its wooden prison. Or it might be named for a doctor called Sir Thomas Desmond Gimlet, who might have popularized the drink. Personally, I actually think the barrel opener story is more likely. There's not a whole lot of info on Sir Gimlet, but uh, who knows? Uh, either one does seem to be basically equally true. What I think is definitely not true, by the way, is that the Gimlet tool would be named after Dr. Gimlet. Um, those two things uh, don't seem to correlate. Uh, despite all these sailors and officers staking their lives on the curative powers of the Gimlet for years and years, it seems that the recipe doesn't show up in print until 1922, when Harry McElhone publishes his ABCs of Mixing Cocktails. I actually don't have a copy of Harry's book, so I'll have to take Punch's word for it, but his recipe calls for equal parts London Dry Gin and Rose's Lime Cordial. The next published recipe for the drink is in the Savoy Cocktail Book in 1930, which I do have a copy of, and in the Savoy Book it calls for one part London Dry and one part lime juice. It doesn't specify Rose's Lime Cordial, which can create some confusion, I think. If you didn't know that the whole history of the drink was about lime cordial, you'd assume it meant fresh lime juice. Except for the fact that the book also specifies that it should be stirred and not shaken. And with fresh lime juice, you would definitely shake this drink. So, if you look around online, you'll find an awful lot of gimlet recipes that call for fresh lime juice. In fact, I'm going to make one of them in this episode. Regardless, I'm reasonably positive that when looking at these older books, even if it doesn't specify cordial for this one, assume cordial. Um, and there's like two reasons why a lot of online recipes would call for lime juice as opposed to lime cordial. One is that they're misinterpreting an old recipe uh, that was printed in a way, you know, for people who knew, right? Uh, and the other possibility is with stuff that's new is that they're trying to kind of make it a craft cocktail. And that's actually what we're going to do when we, you know, they're trying to use fresh ingredients. They're trying to, to make it zhuzh it up, you know, a little je ne sais quoi, a little plus. 
uh, and that's what we're going. That'll be the, that's in the spirit of the fresh lime juice version that I'll be making in this episode. Uh, there is one other famous printing of a gin gimlet recipe that I'm sort of obligated to mention, and that's in Raymond Chandler's *The Long Goodbye*, which was published in 1954. A character by the name of Terry Lennox describes how a proper gimlet is made to Philip Marlowe. A real gimlet is half gin and half roses, lime juice, and nothing else. It beats martinis hollow. I only bring this up because for some reason I've seen it repeated online that this is the invention of the Gimlet, that it didn't exist before this page of this Raymond Chandler novel in 1954. That is false. So the first one I want to make is the bog standard variety. It's going to call for Rose's Lime Cordial. Lime Cordial, at least this commercially produced um, variety, is totally devoid of fruit pulps. Does not play by the same cocktail rules as lime juice. So traditionally, this drink is actually stirred. Um, even though there's, quote, lime juice in it, we're going to stir it. Typically, if there's fruit juices in a drink, you're going to shake it. Lime cordial doesn't play by those rules. You stir it. It's just the way it works. I don't know. I, I, you know, if you don't like it, I don't make the rules. You're just going to have to deal with it. So in my mixing glass, I'm going to do a 50-50 here. That's actually pretty standard. I'm going to do an ounce and a half of each. One and a half ounces of my Rose's Lime Cordial. That's 45 mils, for those of you who are metrically inclined around the world. I'm gonna pour in the same amount of my London Dry Gin. Happen to be using Ford's Gin today, it's just fine. Uh, good gin, an ounce and a half, otherwise known as 45 mils. Boom. Tanqueray is a great gin as well. Some people ask me that, what's your favorite gin? Um, I like Ford's when I can get it. Uh, next favorite would be like Tanqueray. Aviation is really good too, I like Aviation a lot. Right in there. Um, Aviation's a little less juniper-y though. Um, I like it a lot, it's, it's more citrusy than juniper. It's, it's actually, for my palate, I like it more, but for meeting the standard expectations of a gin, of a London Dry, I don't know if it's quite as good um, at that. I like it a lot. It's like one of my favorite gins. I just, you know what I'm saying. Similarly, like Hendrix. I like Hendrix a lot too, but I, I, it's hard for me to use it on the show because Hendrix is nothing really like a London Dry. I'm gonna crack some ice in there, uh, stir it up, and strain it into an appropriate glass. Got my ice, I'm gonna crack it into my glass here. I do an appropriate glass and stand that by. Give this a stir. Uh, I will strain that into, it's actually a sour glass. I think I broke all my neck and nose, which is embarrassing, but it's totally appropriate. Actually, it's not. It's a little, a little short pour, but that's all right. It's just for science. Okay. Okay, let's try this uh, lime cordial version of a gimlet. What a pretty color it has too, right? A little green, I like it. I don't hate that. I can't remember the last time I've had a gimlet. It is really tart. There's a real high level of bitterness to this, which is very, very pleasant here. It, it's cold, it's tart, it's bitter. It has a very strong lime punch. It's sweet, but it doesn't taste like a lime sweet treat, like a lime candy or something like that. It certainly doesn't taste like a, like a limey, a lime ice pop. It's really pretty great. The gin, is the gin a little bit lost? Maybe. No, actually, actually, it does a really good job of, of marrying the juniper. The lime and the juniper are kind of doing a really nice interplay. The bitterness of the lime, the lime bitterness. It's like a very kefir kind of like lime peel, lime leaf thing. It does a nice job of, of kind of uh, playing with the juniper of the gin. I really like this drink actually quite a bit. I can see how it could be better though. It's a bit one note, doesn't have very much evolution. Um, certainly the ingredients aren't fresh, so just like on the merits of that, it, just on the merits of that, it kind of loses a few points, right? Interesting. I'm enjoying it a lot. Better slow down here, boys. It has like a mouth-watering, lips-puckering kind of um, a bite to it that is not unlike a really good sour, honestly. Um, and that makes a lot of sense because the cordial brings sugar. Sour kind of happens when you take that citrus flavors, those acids, and meet them with some sugar, you get, you know, what we call sour. Okay, let's move on, because now, technically speaking, Rose's Lime Cordial should be nothing more, really, than lime juice and sugar. It should be, but it's not. We should be able to make a fresh juice version of a gin gimlet using uh, nothing more than fresh juice, simple syrup, and gin, right? Well, that is exactly what a lot of gin gimlet recipes now call for today. So uh, you could fiddle with the ratios a little bit. I'm actually gonna do this one on Sarah Morrissey's spec. 
Um, I think I found it in Punch Magazine, I think. I'm gonna need an ounce of fresh lime juice. I got a lime here. I'm hoping there's an ounce in this lime. Is there like an ounce? It might be, I don't know. I think this might be a little shy of an ounce. We'll find out. Just uh, pour it through a fine strainer to get rid of some pulp. I don't know if she meant finer than that, but it's kind of what I had, so. Need three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup and two ounces of London dry gin. I'm gonna shake that over ice and strain it into whatever you're gonna drink it from. In my case, sour glass. Another one of these glasses. And there we have Sarah Morrissey's take on the gin gimlet, fresh juice version. Ooh. It does read as a lot sweeter than the roses version, if you can believe it. I like this a lot, but it is essentially a gin daiquiri or gin sour. It's sweet. Maybe mine's too sweet. Maybe I could have gone for a half an ounce of that simple. I think it could be a little tartar. It's not too, too sweet. The thing is, is like, this is a perfectly drinkable drink. If I told you this was a gin daiquiri, you'd say, my God, that's good. If I told you this was a gin gimlet and you had some experience with this and this is what you were expecting, I think this would miss the mark for you. I like it a lot. It's an extremely tasty, delicious, drinkable drink. Just not really sure it's a gimlet now that I'm having both side by side. That is so bitter. I think maybe mine is a, just a touch too sweet, but that wouldn't really change the amount of bitterness either. I mean, it might, it would just be a little drier. It would probably be a little bit more balanced if I had used a lighter pour of sugar. I think that I'm losing some of the gin notes here because I poured a bit more simple than I should have, but I'm not gonna, you know, pulling back a quarter ounce of simple isn't gonna suddenly make this thing have the kind of bracing bitterness that this has. This is still going to be pretty uh, much like a gin daiquiri. Just, it could be, I could have balanced it better. It's my own mistake. I think that my simple is probably sweeter than hers. I didn't know that from reading her recipe. On the other hand, if I was served this somewhere, I would never send this back. It was absolutely delicious. It's just not exquisite. It's not perfect. It's not a scrum trelescent cocktail. Scrum trelescent. But, and it, it is basically kind of like a gin daiquiri. I mean, it, it's exactly what it tastes like, which is, Turns out great. <laughs> Up next, um, we're gonna do one more gimlet, but this one is Jeffrey Morgenthaler's. So stay with me. Okay, so my last gin gimlet, a little, little, little. you can tell I've drank two gin gimlets or most of two gin gimlets because gimlet has become difficult to say. And so this brings me to Jeffrey Morgenthaler's take on this. He did a ton of work, some like 21 test batches, I think, to figure out how to make his own lime cordial that had all the bitterness and bite of the roses version, but none of the high fructose corn syrup or artificial flavors. So I am presenting his work here, uh, but there's a link to his blog right below this video. For the record, he thinks the fresh juice plus sugar method makes a fine drink, I agree, just that it fell short of what he expects a gimlet to be. I agree. So we're gonna start uh, making a batch of his lime cordial recipe and I'm gonna do it in my blender, which I've got the top of right here, and I'm gonna need a scale. His recipe starts by calling for, okay, 250 grams of sugar in my blender. Overshot it by four grams, not bad. Uh, then I'm gonna peel the zest uh, off of about two of my limes and dump that into the sugar. So now I'm gonna zest I'm gonna zest, is that the right, is it a verb? Zest, you zest something, is that a verb? I think it's a zest, a verb. As I'm filming this, I just crossed the threshold. I now have one million subscribers. One million subscribers. This is uh, quality content here. Just me working in silence for like five minutes. Next, I'm gonna juice the limes. I'm looking for about an ounce and a half of fresh lime juice. That's actually all that goes into this. I probably should have had dinner instead of two gin gimlets. I probably should have done that instead. Oh, you know, live and learn. Oh yeah, that's a juicy lime. That's a juicy boy. <laughs> Your man's juicy little son of a bitch. There we go. 
Now I'm looking for about a volumetric ounce of citric acid, a super useful ingredient to have around the kitchen. If you need some, I will provide a link below for that. Um, I actually need some more myself. This is actually all my wife left me with. So I'm hoping it's an ounce. It actually really does look like just about an ounce, but that's what I got. Okay. Didn't know, I didn't know that I was out. Whoa, Whew. tea kettle right there and hot too. Man, look at that. It's amazing what the power of editing can do. So now using my team kettle, uh, tea kettle, my not my team kettle, I'm gonna heat up some water and add about eight ounces to the rest of these ingredients. Uh, ounces in milliliters is like 237, 238. Um, water is a gram per milliliter, so I can safely measure this, if it would power up, I can safely measure this using the uh, scale here. So for 235 grams, otherwise milliliters of water or thereabouts. There we go. Oh, about a half a minute. Half a minute. Okay, um, and so that is it. We're gonna strain that and bottle it. Um, I'm actually gonna do something wacky. I'm gonna pour it through two of these guys just to really make sure that, you know, we wanna make this as pulp and particle free as possible. And here we have our Morgenthaler version of, um, of uh, lime cordial. Um, I feel like I kind of owe it to myself to try the two side by side and I don't have any like little tasting glasses. So what the heck, let's just do it kind of like this. Okay, lime cordial. That's bitter. Woo! That's bitter. Uh, more than a thousand. It's a little hot still, so. Ooh, that's good. Definitely bitter. A little bit sweeter. Really lots of character. I mean, there's a big evolution in there. That's a whole lot of flavor. That's a different, wow. Mr. Morgenthaler, thank you. Okay, so we've made Jeff's cordial. Let's make his gimlet. He likes a ratio that works out to two ounces of London dry gin to one and a half ounces of the cordial. Do we shake or do we stir? I don't know, it's a good question. I think we can stir this. I think that this is cordial. We can stir it. So I've got my mixing glass here. Uh, I will add one and a half ounces of his cordial to it. And I will now add two ounces of London Dry Gin. Consistently here, we're using Fords for all of these because I want them to all have, I want the variable here to be the, the lime component, not the gin. I want the gin to be the same so we can really make a comparison, right? We gotta get some ice in there, stir it up. I kind of went a little bit off the wall, a little overkill on my ice cracking today. Cooled down really fast. I think we're good. Maybe we should garnish this one, right? Uh, well, I'm out of lime, so no garnish. <laughs> I should garnish it with a lime wheel. Perhaps I will in the close-up. I don't have any limes on set, and I've had to cut like five times to make this episode, so let's taste it. One thing right off the bat I'll note is that it's much closer in color to um, our number two than our number one, and I kind of wish it was like more the number one, but let's give it a taste. It's okay. Without that yellow number five, I don't know how you'd get there. Oh man, this is great. Oh my God. Yeah. That has the bitterness of the roses and the fresh fruit and sweetness of the, um, the fresh version. This is phenomenal. Oh my God, it's so good. Mouth puckering tartness. I mean, just like really just grabs the, 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 the saliva from your glands. It is tart, fresh, bright, citrus and sharp. And I mean like beyond, like it goes into the bitter territory, past sour, uh, which I think is important here. It is definitely just the right amount of sweetness, uh, right on the money, dead on. Um, any more too sweet, any less, it wouldn't be balanced. Um, the gin is not lost. I'm definitely getting a very subtle interplay here with the juniper and the, the lime cordial. It, possibly you might want a gin that's even more junipery for this, you know, something that's really heavy. Ooh, that's wonderful. Oh man, what a refreshing, like deliciously refreshing. I like this better than a gin and tonic. This is more my thing than a gin and tonic. I like a gin and tonic once in a while. This for me fulfills that same thing. It's like that 
liquid air conditioning hot weather drink that you can really kind of spend some time with, although this one would warm up because it's not on the rocks, but uh, next to the pool in the 90 degree direct sunlight kind of day. Um, but I'm not always in the mood for the kind of bitterness I get from quinine, from a tonic. But this is never going to miss for me. This is unbelievably good. And it's not like this, where this is a bit too much like a daiquiri to be a gimlet. Oh man, that's good. I just want to melt into the floor with this drink. Jesus. Today I made a gimlet three ways. Roses, fresh juice, Morgenthaler kind of splitting the difference or something. I mean, basically making your own lime cordial. We made lime cordial. We got the recipe for that in here. This is a packed episode, right? I'm on how to drink. I'm on how to drink. I'm on Twitter at how to drink with a number in the middle. I'm on Instagram at how to drink with a number in the middle. Same way it's spelled at how numeral two drink. Um, I am on Patreon at patreon.com slash how to drink. I'm on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Greg from HTD. Um, I am live on there as often as I can be. Certainly Thursday nights at 9 p.m. I am uh, running. I am dungeon mastering or game mastering. Uh, real actual play live role playing games. We've been playing D&D &D 5th edition on a homebrew setting. I think we're going to do some uh, cyberpunk. So maybe we're doing that by the time this video comes out. If you're interested in live content but can't make it to Twitch, I've got a second YouTube channel. It's called H2D2. All my live stuff winds up over there at some point. So subscribe to that. Turn the bell on. You will miss a thing. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back very soon with another episode of How to Drink. Does it look weird when I put my hand on my hip like this? Do I look a little matronly? No, actually, I look... Damn. That's a... I'm just looking at the monitor. I look like a real man now. Woof! <laughs> look like a million subscriber man. I would love to tell you to do all those silly things that YouTubers are supposed to tell you to do. Subscribe, comment, like it, ring a bell. I don't think any of that shit matters. But what would be really cool and what does actually matter is if you like my show, check out some more of my episodes. Look at these episodes. You know, I've done a lot of stuff with uh, covering basic ingredients and I've done a lot of stuff with, uh, you know, the, the, the sours, the, the drink you should start with to learn mixology. I've talked about the top five tiki drinks. I've talked about all kinds of things. Uh, I've been doing this for a while. I got a lot of episodes. You, if you're new to the show, you've got a lot of work to do.